I'm Dave Greenwood, and this is Overcoming Distractions. If you are an adult with ADHD, a busy professional, an entrepreneur, a high achiever, or just need some strategies to navigate your adult ADHD, you're in the right place. Who am I? I'm an entrepreneur with ADHD and the author of two books, Overcoming Distractions and Overcoming Burnout. I coach and mentor people just like you, and together we navigate the ups and downs of adult ADHD. From getting out of our own way to helping people just like you thrive in the workplace. That's what I do. Want more info on working with me? Hit overcomingdistractions.com. Ready? Let's get to today's podcast. All right, people, welcome back to Overcoming Distractions. It is Dave, your humble host. Thank you so much for joining me once again. And if you are new and just hit the download button and you are a busy professional with ADHD who has many other responsibilities and interests in life, then you are in the right place. So, hey, uh, let's not waste another minute, as I have been accused of doing from (laughs) time to time. So let's get into it. Breaking news, everybody. I have breaking news here. You ready for it? Everybody procrastinates. (laughs) Yes. Yes. You are not alone. Everybody thinks us ADHDers are the only ones that procrastinate, but that would be uh, a false statement. So, Um, So I want to talk about just some kind of generalities and some questions that you can ask yourself if you find yourself in a state of procrastination. Um, You know, before, I really, one of the most enjoyable and thought-provoking interviews uh, I did for both the book and on the podcast a couple times was a gentleman by the name of Dr. Timothy Pischel, and he is the author of Solving the Procrastination Puzzle. And uh, it's a really cool book. All you need to do is get up on Amazon and search for it, Solving the Procrastination Puzzle. It's not even a long read. Uh, But Dr. Pischel has studied procrastination for decades. And he is the guy when it becomes the procrastination. He is the doctor (laughs) of procrastination. You know, and I thought I was when I was younger, but he is the true doctor of procrastination. Uh, But I wanted to dig in a a little bit. I I see so much in, you know, misinformation about procrastination on social media. um, And it's kind of frightening sometimes. Again, when we talk, uh, I've talked about burnout and people capitalizing on the burnout hashtag. Well, people capitalize on the procrastination, procrastination hashtag. Um, let's understand what procrastination is. Uh, and here's what Dr. Pischel says about procrastination. And I think it's a pretty good and very quick definition. I'm paraphrasing just a tiny but. Uh, But he said it is the voluntary delay of an intended act, despite basically expecting or knowing is going to be worse off for the delay. So meaning, if you had to do something, and you pushed it off, and it was something urgent, then it only gets worse. And we're going to get into that in, in just a second. But As you probably have figured out by now, as an adult with ADHD uh, and juggling many responsibilities, uh, procrastination is complex, but the bottom line is that uh, we're pushing things off because we think we're going to feel better, but we're only kicking that can down the road, as they say. Uh, Procrastination in the long run will make us feel worse because we didn't get something done, We could even get called out for it by our boss or our clients. We look bad. We make mistakes. And a lot of people don't even think of this, but we can actually leave 
a, a path of destruction behind us. Um, not to mention putting others in a situation where now they have to rush around because you procrastinated on, say, a project uh, in your business and your workplace. So, or it could be something as simple as not taking out the trash or doing the dishes. Um, those are things we all probably procrastinate on as well. And as a side note, I did this a while back, but uh, there was a time where I didn't want to empty the dishwasher. It was full. And I said, you know what, I'm going to time this. And, you know, it took me 90 seconds. Um, so think of that. It doesn't take you as long as you think it's going to do. But anyways, all right, because many of us uh, with ADHD procrastinate, I thought I would just put a few of my thoughts from my personal experiences as well as interviewing others about the subject. Um, and I believe one powerful thing that we can do as busy adults with ADHD is ask ourselves questions. So here's some questions to ask yourself when you find yourself procrastinating. And hopefully these will help you sort out uh, what you need to do to get moving. But real quick before I do that, not all delay is procrastination. And we need to understand that. I am a big fan of purposeful delay. Uh, for example, if you're looking at a massive to-do list and like many of us adults with ADHD, you think you have to do it all right now, uh, I believe that strategically delaying tasks or projects, as long as you're not right up to the last minute, is, is a good way of managing your time and energy. And it can actually allow you to more methodically manage your time and your schedule. So if you get good at purposefully delaying things, um, like I said, as long as you're not working at two in the morning to get something done, then it can actually be a good strategy. So, all right, that being said, let's get to some of those questions I talked about in the beginning. Number one, why am I procrastinating? This simple question may be not easily answered, I believe helps you identify the underlying reasons behind your procrastination. Are you feeling overwhelmed, unmotivated? <clears throat> Are you unsure where to start? Did you not sleep well? Are you distracted? And I, I think at the, the most basics of procrastination, we need to kind of ask ourselves why we're actually doing it. So <clears throat> hit the pause button. Take a break and see if you can understand what is getting in your way. Next, am I clear on what needs to be done? One of my favorite words when it comes to ADHD is clarity. And I know from experience over the years that when I was not clear on what needed to be done, I put it off until the pressure was so great that I couldn't wait any longer. So if you are delaying on a project, uh, ask yourself if you are clear on the actual objectives. Let's, uh, let's use a project or, you know, or maybe even like a sales proposal, for example, for a client, you know, many times we don't start these things because we don't have all the details, we need to do our job, then we keep pushing it off. It's up to us to seek clarity from others because guess what? They already think we are clear of what needs to be done. So you need to seek the clarity. Um, you wait a week and then others wonder why you waited so long uh, to ask for the details and more clarity. Um, and then it, it only gets more worse and embarrassing and so on and so on. So the word clarity should guide your ADHD life because it really does make life and business much easier so and less stressful. All right, what is the worst that could happen if I continue to procrastinate? Confronting the potential consequences of procrastination can, for some, be a strong motivator to actually take action. Uh, it can help you weigh the short-term discomfort against what uh, is ultimately going to be the long-term consequences. 
now hear me out. I don't think we should live in fear because sometimes that doesn't work. But if you find something that gets you off your ass, try it. Um, I remember writing for a, uh, a weekly uh, newspaper years and years ago, and I would go cover uh, different town meetings and school committee meetings and, and some other things. Um, and sometimes it would be at night. I still had a day job, so I would get home. I, I didn't want to start writing the article, so I would wait several days. Um, but that became a problem. What I found out is doing these while all the facts and, and the meeting was fresh in my head made an absolute massive difference. Um, plus, as you might imagine, the a newspaper business has hard deadlines. So uh, at some point I was going to have to get that done, but it was much easier if I got it done right after I attended you know, a, a meeting. So, um, But again, it doesn't work for everybody, and I don't want you to live in fear, but if you can light a fire under your ass, then... Um, Sometimes that works. Uh, But that's why the next question can help you flip this around. Uh, How will I feel once I've completed the task? Visualizing a sense of accomplishment, relief that comes from completing, you know, a task can, I think, provide motivation that you might need to get started. Remind yourself how how it feels to get something done. And and I got to tell you, this one actually does work for me. And I love the feeling of not only having something completed, but having the time to work on other things. You know, if I get this done, I might have time uh, to do something I really enjoy. So more things you complete on time, the less things are also hanging over your head, which only drags you down. So next question, what small step can I take right now to move forward? And a lot of people find success uh, when you break down your task into smaller, more manageable steps, uh, focusing on a small, achievable type of action. Uh, you might overcome the initial resistance and get that momentum going. Um, and there's a whole myth about motivation and momentum that I think we've discussed before. But uh, the bottom line is science has figured out uh, finally, that the, you don't need the motivation to get started. You actually need to get started to get the motivation. So, and that's a little bit of a conundrum here in the ADHD world. But, um, you know, when I did a lot of writing for my public relations clients, you know, when I was running a full PR firm, uh, I wasn't motivated every day. And sometimes just opening a Word doc or hopping on Google to help me generate some ideas got, you know, got things moving. You know, now we have AI that can help us in an area such as that if, you know, you're a writer or you're, you're creative or you have other things that need to generate ideas. Um, and sometimes when I was ghost blogging for companies, I, I would lay out the topics the day before. Uh, and for me, that was that little small step. And it was half the battle. And then I got to kick a little butt the next day. Can a small step be something that's just blocking off the time in your calendar? So say it's Monday, you don't want to get started on something. Maybe you can block out a time on Wednesday or what have you and say, you know, this is what I'm going to do, X, Y, Z projects, that type of thing. So a small step can make a big change. Next question, am I setting realistic expectations for myself? And I think sometimes procrastination can stem from setting an overly ambitious or unrealistic goal. And I think uh, adjusting your expectations to help make that task a little more approachable might be a great, uh, great start. Um, you know, I think for many also not worrying about the end goal and just concentrating uh, about getting started can be another technique in getting the ball rolling. Uh, can you set some mini deadlines to just keep progress consistent? Um I have a presentation for a client, but I haven't even started. That could be a huge task uh, or a project. Uh, Maybe a realistic expectation to get started is just maybe lay out the slide titles. So set some realistic expectations for yourself. 
what support or resources do I need to complete this? I mean, and identify the obstacles or the challenges that kind of, you know, hindering your progress. Uh, seek help, get additional resources or additional information. Uh, like I said earlier, that goes back to that clarity. That can actually make the task more manageable. Do you need to work out some systems or routines with a coach or a mentor? Uh, and I know f for many, they listen to podcasts like this uh, and, and other podcasts and maybe watch some YouTube videos, but they just ultimately need somebody to work side by side and dig in. So if you're getting the right support and the right resources, then you can begin to figure out your kind of procrastination patterns um, and, and work on that. So last question is what strategies have worked for me in the past to overcome uh, this procrastination? You know, reflect on the past successes and strategies that helped you get things done, overcome procrastination, get started. Because I think implementing some of these uh, past proven techniques might uh, increase your chances of success uh, in the future. You know, maybe these don't work in your current situation, but it's worth remembering, I believe, what worked before because sometimes we lose sight of this. And, and I was working with, with a client just the other day trying to resolve one of their challenges. And when we were talking, they just chimed in and said, you know, I used to do X, Y, and Z. And I said, well, why don't you try that again? Because the person indicated that that actually worked uh, in years past. So did you forget that? Um, and again, working with somebody side by side uh, might just kind of jog your memory of that. So, all right. Those are some questions that you can ask if you are procrastinating. Rewind it, write it down, do what you got to do. Um, and just remember this one thing. ADHD, uh, uh, us ADHDers, we don't own procrastination. We don't have a monopoly on procrastination. Every person... ADHD or not, procrastinates. Um, now, sometimes those of us with ADHD might bring it to another level, but don't beat yourself up. Don't feel shameful. Just begin the process of recognizing it and making small steps to begin to minimize it. All right, gang, you want to find me. You want to uh, talk about some coaching or mentorship. You've got some things you need to work out. Uh, you've listened, but you still need somebody side by side. I am here. Hit the website, book a 15 minute Zoom chat with me. Let's chat for a few. Let's see if we're a good fit. And hopefully I can help you on your way. It's overcomingdistractions.com. And I'll catch you next time.